Hello everyone, I'm Captain JK. Today, I'd like to talk about kind of elephant in the room. Actually, the elephant is wreaking havoc on everything in the room. As a captain who has a flown on Boeing 737 for three years, I'm gonna go into what Boeing went wrong with Boeing 737, which has been best-selling narrow-body commercial jet. Boeing 737 was born in Boeing factory, Washington, in 1967. It's been 56 years since it entered service with Lufthansa in 1968. And Boeing is still making this super senior aircraft with the name of Notorious Max series. Every commercial jet has its variations like Boeing 747 series, or Airbus A320 series. Boeing 737 has developed in four different generations. 737 original series, Dash 100 and 200 composed this family. The second generation was called Classic series, which included 300 through 500 series. In 1997, its third generation was introduced named as NG. We call that no good. Dash 800 and Dash 900 are the members of new generation aircraft series, which I flew for three years from 2010. If you want to know more about the specification or history regarding this legendary, never-ending aircraft, you can go ahead and Google it now. You will see every detail of it. Like I told you in the intro of this video, I'm going to let you know how good or bad 737 was compared to other aircraft, especially Airbus ones. I had flown Airbus A330 for more than 9 years as a first officer before I went down to Boeing 737 to become a captain, commander. At the moment, Boeing 737 was so challenging to the pilot who was used to flying Airbus planes for a long time. My memory is a bit rusty, but I clearly remember the first training session in the simulator. I'm not going to say the difference between the controllability between these two airplanes. The first thing that was so hard for me to get used to was approach speed. Regardless of what the airplane is, Airbus planes provide relatively low approach speed, like around 130 to 135 knots. But I had to get used to pretty high approach speed of Boeing 737-900NG. It was around 150 to 155 knots. This 20 knot difference was huge to me during flare. 40, 30, 20, return, 10, 5. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. or especially circling maneuver with a short base or final like in Busan runway 18 in South Korea. You know, the higher the speed is, the greater the turning radius I get, which means I would have less room for making turns. Note that the previous generation of Boeing 737 got way less approach speed than Boeing 737-900NG. This is all because of longer and heavier body of new generation aircraft. Every time a next generation aircraft comes out, it got longer and heavier to live up to the user's demand. Look at these two airplanes. This is 737-100, one in the very early stage. As you can see, even the fuselage itself is quite low, engine looks pretty normal. I mean, the position where the engine is mounted from its wing is just natural. And this is 737-300, the next generation. I mean, the classic 737, not NG. You can see the engine got a lot bigger and the engine is mounted higher than before. This is how the famous triangular Boeing 737 engines came out. 
the flat bottomed engines so as to put bigger engines with the same ground clearance provided. But until 737NG, there have been no critical issues regarding flight safety. I guess many of you already know how 737 MAX came out to the world. I would like to say it's all because of greed. Greed of airlines and greed of manufacturer. It is said that Boeing has been concentrating on rather cutting costs, in other words, making more money than putting efforts on developing new technologies since they incorporated McDonnell Douglas company in 1997. Actually, Boeing had a plan to make whole new narrow-body aircraft, just like 787 Dreamliners. With that said, they should have started much earlier. The champion of the commercial jet business did not know what its challenger was preparing to beat them. In 2010, Airbus introduced eye-opening narrow-body aircraft named as A320neo. It was more powerful, more fuel-efficient, and able to carry more passengers. All the airline companies were mesmerized by this new tech airplane. So was American Airlines, who has been close friends with Boeing company. The born of the Max was just like that. Boeing had no choice but transforming 737 into a monster to fight Airbus A320neo. I guess many of you are already aware of these issues regarding Boeing 737 MAX. Boeing could not help making weird looking engine mount in order to put even bigger CFM leap engine up on the wings of 737NG, which already had big engines. Consequently, the engines of the MAX mounted abnormally high and forward deteriorated the movement of the airplane. Boeing was running out of time. They had no time to reconfigure the MAX. So they implanted an additional function into the MCAS system, which gives nose down command when needed without giving any notice to pilots. Basically, MCAS was a brilliant idea to compensate the flaw of the MAX. The real problem was lack of precise and reliable design, which may have taken longer time. So this function in MCAS had two innocent flights fall onto the ground, killing 346 souls on board. And a few weeks ago, a door panel of the MAX 9 was ripped off of the aircraft and climbing. Boeing crisis is still going, and I don't think these things have come from lack of quality control. It's all about greed, I suppose. I just hope that Boeing could take this opportunity to correct everything throughout the company and reborn in order to compete with their competitor. There should always be a sound competition for safety of our precious lives. I'm Captain JK. Thank you very much for watching today and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.